Greetings, students. This is Short Stories, a production of the Language Center. You have probably heard the expression, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, today's story puts that to the test. Today, we will read a short story version of Riquet with the Tuft. I based the story off of a story by Charles Perrault of the same name. Mr. Perrault wrote his version in the 1690s, possibly basing it off of an even older version written by Catherine Bernard. Whoever wrote it down first, this story undoubtedly existed for a long time as part of traditional oral storytelling. It deals with the topic of beauty. What makes a person beautiful? What makes a person worthy of respect and admiration? What makes a person worthy of love? These are all questions that are addressed by this story. Listen and tell me what you think the answers are. Vocabulary Wit Wit He is popular at parties because of his sharp wit. Mortified Mortified The queen was greatly mortified by her daughter's clumsy behavior. Dunce Dunce This test is so easy, only a dunce could fail. Appearance. Appearance. Actors usually have a pleasant appearance. Dyslexia. Dyslexia. He struggled in school because of his dyslexia. Bimbo. Bimbo. He liked to surround himself with bimbos. Genius. Genius. Albert Einstein was a great genius. Clever. Clever. Zhuge Liang was a very clever tactician. The story. Once upon a time there was a queen who had a son who was so ugly and misshapen that it was doubted for a long time whether he was really human. A fairy who was present at his birth affirmed, nevertheless, that he would be worthy to be loved, as he would have an excellent wit. She said that, by virtue of the gift she had bestowed upon him, he would be able to impart equal intelligence to the one whom he loved best. All this was some consolation to the poor queen, who was much distressed at having brought an ugly little monkey into the world. It didn't take the child long to manifest his intellectual abilities. He was reciting poetry by the age of three, and everything he did carried a certain air of intelligence. It's no wonder everyone was charmed by him. Because he was born with a little tuft of hair on his head, he came to be called Riquet with the Tuft. About seven or eight years later, the queen of a neighboring kingdom had two daughters. The elder twin, Odette, was quite pretty. The queen was so delighted that she would hug and pinch her baby quite often. Some members of the court were worried the queen might hurt her. The same fairy who had assisted at the birth of little Riquet was present upon this occasion, and in order to moderate the joy of the queen, she told her that this little princess would have no gifts of mind at all, and that she would be as stupid as she was beautiful. The queen was greatly mortified on hearing this, but shortly after, she was even more annoyed when her second little daughter, Colette, was born and proved to be extremely ugly. "'Don't worry, madam,' said the fairy to her. Your daughter will find compensation, for she will have so much intelligence that her lack of beauty will scarcely be noticed. As these two princesses grew up, their characteristics became more and more pronounced. Odette grew up to be a real beauty, but unfortunately, she was also a real dunce. She got very bad grades at school and found reading quite difficult. Every time she looked at the page in her book, 
it seemed like all the letters became jumbled and confusing. To make matters worse, she was quite clumsy as well. Meanwhile, Colette became an ugly young woman who, nevertheless, managed to climb the social ladder due to her rhetorical abilities and quick wit. At parties, guests frequently approached Odette first due to her very attractive appearance. But upon realizing that she was slow of mind and clumsy of speech, they would always turn to Colette, who became the life of the party. It wasn't long before Colette was receiving proposals for marriage. To her father's chagrin, she turned them all down. I don't need a husband, she told Odette one evening. In fact, I don't need anyone. Odette looked at her sister with melancholy eyes. Not even me, she murmured. Colette slightly hugged her sister and replied, Oh, what would I do without my bait? Odette asked her to explain what she meant by this. Colette responded, You know, the party guests. You get them hooked, and I reel them in. This cut a deep wound in Odette's heart. I'd give away all my beauty just to have half of my sister's brains, she lamented. After this exchange with her sister, Odette went to her usual secluded spot in the forest near the castle to cry. While she was quietly weeping alone, she saw a little man who was quite unpleasant in appearance. He did, however, wear a beautiful set of clothes, which was only natural for a prince. When the ugly little man passed close by her, he stopped, bowed, and said, My lady, what troubles you? Odette sniffed, wiped away a tear, and said, I'm afraid I'm not too popular at court. The ugly man looked shocked to hear this and replied, How could someone as beautiful as you be unpopular? Odette blushed a little and answered, I do not lack beauty, that is true, but what I lack is brains. Beauty, said the man, is the greatest advantage there is. Beautiful people can do anything they want. Odette sighed and said, I wish that were true, but I'd give all my beauty to have some brains. The man thought for a minute. Then he introduced himself. My lady, my name is Riquet, and I believe I can help you. He went on to explain his proposal. Riquet offered to help teach Odette in exchange for a promise of marriage in the future. Odette didn't know what to say to that, so Riquet modified his proposal. You don't have to marry me right away. I'll give you a full year to decide. In the meantime, I will hold lessons out here five days a week. How does that sound? Odette agreed to those terms. The first lesson did not go very well. Riquet handed Odette a children's book and asked her to read aloud. She kept stumbling over words. Are you sure you learned your ABCs? asked Riquet. Yes, insisted Odette, but every time I look at certain words, it's like the letters switch places. Riquet was silent for a couple of minutes while he scratched his chin. Hmm, I think you might have dyslexia, he finally said. Don't worry, I know just what to do. With Riquet's special teaching techniques and just a little bit of the fairy's magic, Odette managed to overcome her dyslexia. In just a few lessons, she was reading children's books with ease. In a few weeks, she was reading high school textbooks. In a few months, she was reading Homer and Petrarch. Odette's math skills advanced similarly. She found that she could suddenly solve math equations with ease. First, she learned long division and multiplication. From there, she moved on to geometry and algebra. After just two months, she was solving problems in differential calculus. Her next set of lessons focused on the social sciences, history, philosophy, and rhetoric. She read the complete works of Thucydides and wrote an academic thesis about the Melian Dialogue. Then she moved on to Thomas Aquinas and Erasmus. She finished this series of lessons by studying the speeches of Cicero. 
she was now able to speak with such ready cleverness that Riquet began to think he had given her more wit than he had reserved for himself. Soon Odette was becoming a hit at parties. Guests actually took time to speak with her. I thought she was a bimbo, said one guest, but now she is a genius. Things didn't stop there. The king decided to include her in his royal council. Now she was debating matters of state with the country's greatest minds. Colette was not altogether pleased, for having lost her superiority over her sister in the way of intelligence, she now only appeared as a very unpleasant-looking person by comparison. I'm supposed to be the smart one, she grumbled. Then one day the king asked his daughter if she desired a husband. You can choose for yourself, of course, but it's high time that you gave some thought to settling down. With your brains and your looks, you could have any prince in the world. This gave Odette pause. Let me ponder this for a while, father, she replied. Odette wandered to her favorite spot in the woods to think over her father's proposal. Do I even need a husband? she asked herself. Do I want a husband? Just then, Odette heard a strange sound coming from the ground. It was a low thumping and scuffling sound, like dozens of feet running back and forth. She knelt down to put her ear closer to the ground. Now she could hear voices. Bring me the saucepan, said one voice. Where's the kettle, said another. Odette started feeling the ground with her fingers, hoping to find a hidden doorway. Eventually, her fingers discovered a metal ring. She pulled on it, revealing a hidden chamber directly under her feet. Odette stuck her head in the hole and was amazed to discover a troop of dwarfs busily preparing a feast. "'What are you doing?' asked the princess. The tallest dwarf made a sudden jump and hiccuped when he heard her speak. "'My lady,' he said, "'we weren't expecting you until tomorrow. You gave me quite a fright.' Odette was puzzled. What's happening tomorrow? she asked. The dwarf smiled and answered, Your wedding, of course. Odette jolted upright, her eyes as wide as saucers. The wedding, she gasped. All of a sudden, she remembered the deal she had made with Riquet. Has it been a full year already? she wondered. Just as she was saying this, Riquet arrived, wearing his finest suit. You see, my lady, he said. I keep my word punctually, and I don't doubt that you have come here to keep yours. Odette took a step back and began nervously adjusting her clothes. Frankly, she began, I haven't decided yet. Riquet was shocked and asked her to explain. What followed was a philosophical debate between two great minds. Odette tried to explain why she couldn't follow through with her deal. A wise man such as yourself, she said, will surely understand that I was not competent enough to make such a decision when we first met. If you really wanted to marry me, you should have kept me stupid. Riquet responded, And you are wise enough to know that a princess is bound by her word. Debate went back and forth for some time until Riquet said, Besides my ugliness, is there anything in me that displeases you? Odette confessed that there was not. If that is so, rejoined Riquet, I shall soon be happy, as you have it in your power to make me the most attractive of men. Odette was confused. How is that possible? she asked. Riquet paused a bit before he answered. The same fairy that assisted in my birth also assisted in yours, just as I have used my love to pass on some of my intellect onto you. You have the power to pass some of your good looks onto me, if you love me, that is. Odette looked Riquet in the eyes and said, If that's the case, then I do love you, and I wish you to be the handsomest prince in the world. She ran forward and embraced him. No sooner had Odette pronounced these words than Riquet with a tuft appeared to her eyes the handsomest man in the world. 
There are some who assert that it was not the spell of the fairy, but love alone that caused this metamorphosis. They say that the princess, having reflected on the perseverance of her lover, on his prudence, and on all the good qualities of his heart and mind, no longer saw the deformity of his body or the ugliness of his features. However this may be, the princess promised on the spot to marry him, provided he obtained the consent of the king, her father. The king, having learned that his daughter had a great regard for Riquet with the Tuft, whom he knew also to be a very clever and wise prince, received him with pleasure as his son-in-law. The wedding took place the next morning, as Riquet with the Tuft had foreseen. No beauty, no talent has power above, some indefinite charm discerned only by love. Questions. Number one. What gift did the fairy give to Riquet? A. Good looks. B. Wealth. C. A kingdom. D. Intelligence. The answer is D. Intelligence. Question two. Why was Odette so sad? A. She lost her dog. B. She couldn't find her way home. C. Her sister died. D. She was unpopular. The answer is D. She was unpopular. Question 3. What deal did Odette and Riquet make? A. Riquet would make her queen in exchange for marriage. B. Riquet would make her smart in exchange for marriage. C. Odette would make Riquet handsome in exchange for marriage. D. Odette would exchange her old Oldsmobile for his Pontiac Firebird. The answer is B. Riquet would make her smart in exchange for marriage. Question 4. What is the lesson of this story? A. Love is the greatest gift of all. B. Beauty is the greatest gift of all. C. Intelligence is the greatest gift of all. D. Fairies are jerks. The answer is A. Love is the greatest gift of all.